we are going to talk about how women finally got access to engineering studies in Colombia. This is the structure of our talk. First, we will refer to the international context focusing on the West. Then we will concentrate on the Colombian context and uh, we will look in detail at the process of analyzing the admission of women to engineering studies in a particular university. And finally, we will see the cases of two sisters, Rebecca and Guillermina Uribe Pony. Rebecca is the first woman to graduate in any field of engineering in Colombia, and Guillermina, who graduated shortly thereafter, is one of the first civil engineers. Their stories tell us a lot about the perspectives of women in their time. Throughout history, women have generally been kept out of scientific and technical areas, so there are a few exceptions of which the ones we see here are well known. Hildegard von Bingen in Middle Ages, Sophia Brahe in the Renaissance, Ada Lovelace, jean philippe Power, and Sofia Kovalevskaya in Modern Times. But these well-known exceptions only confirm the rule of exclusion of women from science. It should be noted that, perhaps, many more were engaged in practical occupation, but similarly to what happened with male artisans, very little information about them has come to us. In the 19th century, the barrier to women's access to technical careers slowly began to fall. In England, in the mid-19th century, there were only two suitable occupations for a single mid-class woman, teaching or governessing. This was a vicious circle that led to women often becoming destitute, not having adequate education for other jobs. And the girls who learned from these ill-prepared teachers and governesses were no better prepared for the possible need to support themselves. The Taunton Commission, held in 1860, was a part of an effort to adapt education in England to the new circumstances of the Industrial Revolution. This commission encouraged a new type of girls' school and more professional-minded teachers. Changes like these were strongly felt and in the following years women began to venture into all fields of education, including engineering. Elizabeth Bragg, Bertha Lamb, and Rita de Moraes were some of these pioneers. Of course, the proportions of women in science and engineering were still low. For example, between 1862 and 1919, only 11% of the doctoral degrees in mathematics were granted to women. During the first half of the 20th century, women were increasingly involved in engineering, science and mathematics and, in theory, by 1970 they had achieved the ability to participate in any field of science. In fact, their participation remained low. In Canada, for example, between 1999 and 2002, it was 20% and tending to decline. The proportion of this participation varies between fields. It is more equitable in chemical engineering and biology, for example. Our country, Colombia, arrived late to the changes. One big issue was that women were almost completely illiterate and their legal status had not been granted until 1932. A series of liberal governments during the 30s won many civil liberties for women, including access to high school diploma uh, in 1932. Already in 1925, Paulina Beregov had obtained a degree in medicine from the University of Cartagena in Colombia, but her status as a foreigner gave, gave her a differential um, condition that allowed her access to places that Colombian women were denied. The first Colombian woman 
who went to college in a Colombian university was Gerda Westendorp of German descent. In 1935, she entered the National University to study medicine, although she did not graduate. In the field of sciences, it was not until 1943 that two women graduated as chemists, Dora Turk and Beatriz Padilla. The first female engineer, Rebecca Uribe Boni, graduated from a Catholic institution, Pontificia Bolivariana University, in 1945. Here, we see the evolution of the general coverage of higher education in Colombia as a sample in time of the number of the university students with respect to the total population of the country. In recent years, there have been a relative increase, but the higher levels of education are still not so common in Colombia, and the prospects for women in science are still low, only around 25% of the Colombian researchers are women. Admit women to engineering studies? That is the question that the Council of the Católica Bolivariana University asked in 1940. On February 21st, Monsignor Manuel José Sierra, rector of the institution, shared with the councillors that a young lady had applied to enter the Faculty of Industrial Chemistry, which was founded two years earlier. The rector wanted to know the opinion of the councillors. Here we have the key figures in the admission of women to engineering careers in Colombia. Since the Católica Bolivariana University was a private university uh, governed by the Catholic Church, its leaders were mostly priests. Here we have Monsignor Tiberio de Jesus Salazar Herrera, Archbishop of Medellin, and the highest authority of the university. Monsignor Manuel José Sierra, first rector of the university. Priest Felix Enao Botero, dean of high school, and Juan Luis Consuegra de la Cruz, first dean of the Faculty of Industrial Chemistry. These men were the first to admit a female engineering student to a Catholic university, which is no small feat. But which were their concerns? They distinguished between two concepts, coeducación, somehow educating men and women in the same way, versus co-instruction, that is, training them together. Co-educación was prohibited by the Catholic Church. Meanwhile, co-instruction was accepted, and a Catholic university could offer moral guarantees to the female students, they said. Fortunately, there were precedents. Three of the counselors had witnessed themselves co-instruction at Catholic universities and institutes in Europe. Another good precedent was that official universities had already opened their doors to women, so legal recognition of UCB degrees would not be a problem. Then, the counselors reached unanimously a conclusion. The applicant should be accepted, not on trial, but as a definitive orientation of the university. The Archbishop confirmed the decision. In contrast, there were still doubts about the admission of women to law school. At UCB, they thought Subjects like criminal law and legal medicine would offer serious difficulties when training together men and women. Now we want to talk about two outstanding sisters, Rebecca and Guillermina Uribe Bon, pioneers. 
Here we have Rebecca on the left and Guillermina on the right. Rebecca Uribe Bon was born on July 7, 1917, in Guatemala City. Her parents were Guillermo Uribe, a Basque accountant, and Maria Teresa Bon, a Guatemalan woman of English ancestry. The family immigrated to Colombia around 1930. Rebecca studied at the Female Central Institute of Medellin, a remarkable institution, with teacher as Joaquin Vallejo Arbeláez, a prominent engineer, economist, minister, intellectual from Antioquia, our region, as well as students from the School of Mines, the first university that graduated engineers in our city. Rebecca entered the Faculty of Industrial Chemistry in 1940, and she graduated in 1945. She was not only the first female to graduate with a degree in chemical engineering in UCB, but she was the first female to graduate with a degree in engineering in general in Colombia. Here we can see Rebecca on the left, among other students in a chemistry lab. We can see that she's not the only woman in the photo. She was the first who graduated and the only one for several years. But as the university keeps records only of graduates, we don't have any information of those other women who dared to start a career at that time but for some reason didn't finish it. Here we have Rebecca's diploma. The title is in Latin. The expression translates industrial chemical engineer. We were able to access the diploma thanks to Marcelo Riveros, who contacted Rebecca's son in Spain. Unlike other women who managed to graduate at that time, Rebecca spent several years working as an engineer. Here we can see her at the Quality Lab of Bavaria, a very important beer company in Colombia. Her sister, Guillermina, says that she also worked with a Frenchman, exporting cinchona, in Spanish, quina. At some point, she settled in Spain where she died in 2017, just about to turn 100 years old. Her son says that she, until advanced age, was a lucid, an autonomous woman who read daily in several languages. Rebecca's sister, Guillermina, was also a civil engineer. In her case, as she told Marcelo Riveros and Alberto Mayor, two prominent historians of our country, a great inspiration was Enriqueta Seculi, a Spanish Republican, director of the Female Central Institute of Medellin, and who instilled in Guillermina, in her words, respect for the ideas of others, a deep love of freedom tolerance as a firm foundation of peace. Enriqueta left to Spain to fight in the civil war, which made a deep impression on her students. Guillermina studied civil engineering at the National University of Colombia and graduated in 1948, three years after Rebecca. She reports that there was only one other woman in the same course and that the very recent engineering building was not equipped to house women, nor did it even have a restroom for them. This did not change until the 70s. Like many women of her time, Guillermina only worked until she had her first child and she had nine, so she never went back to work in her profession. It should be noted that Guillermina's family can be considered exceptional as there were three professional women in her family. This was not, 
and certainly is not the most common situation, but women like this continue to open in the path to gender equality. Thank you. We will gladly attend your questions.